Hello everyone. Welcome to the video class on NMR principle. NMR is very useful technique which is used to identify organic molecular structures. In most of the all pharmaceutical industries, the structure determination is carried by NMR and mass. In this video, I am going to explain the principle of NMR which is very important. If you understand the principle properly, interpretation will become easier. This is my YouTube channel. If you like the video content, do subscribe and share the video. Let's get into the topic. Now, NMR means nuclear magnetic resonance. Let me explain individual terms and then explain how it is related to NMR technique. Now, see this technique is related to nucleus. It is not related to electrons. In case of UV and visible spectra, the spectra is related to electronic transitions. What happens in UV visible? When UV or visible radiation is given, organic molecules will absorb the energy and there occurs electronic transition. In case of infrared radiation, when the infrared radiation is given, organic molecule will absorb that electromagnetic radiation and there occurs changes in bond length as well as bond angle. Bond is formed because of sharing of electrons. So again, this a technique also related to electrons. Whereas in case of NMR, it is not dealing with electrons, rather it deals with nucleus. What do you have in nucleus? In the nucleus, we have a positively charged proton and no charge containing neutron. So this technique completely deals with nucleus. Now, what next? Now nuclear magnetic. Now some of the nuclei will spin, they will be rotating like this. Now in such kind of nucleus when it is put in the external magnetic field, see magnetic field can be given as B0 or H0 depending on the text. When it is placed in the influence of an external magnetic field, what happens is the spin will be oriented according to this external magnetic field. Imagine this is spinning with the axis like this. Now what happens when it is placed in the external magnetic field, the spin axis will be oriented along with this external magnetic field. Because you are using an external magnetic field, it has got the name magnetic. Then why resonance? Now when this nucleus is spinning, it spins with a particular frequency and that frequency when it is, when it is spinning, it spins with a particular frequency. Now to such a kind of nucleus, if you give a radiation with a frequency which is matching the spinning frequency, what happens then? See, two things are there. One, the nucleus is spinning. It spins with a particular frequency. If you provide a electromagnetic radiation which has got similar frequency, the frequency match is what is called as resonance. Both the frequencies, the electromagnetic radiation frequency and the spinning nucleus frequency is same. Then the radiation absorption occurs and the spin changes. It just flips. See, it is according to this external field direction. Because of this energy absorption, it flips. It changes the spin. And this is what happens. Because, the, because of this frequency match, it has got the term resonance. So, again, why it is called as NMR? It involves nucleus and the nucleus is under the influence of an external magnetic field. When the frequency of spinning nucleus and electromagnetic radiation matches, that is called resonance. And at this point, absorption occurs and the nucleus flips. It changes the spin. So, this is what happens in this technique. So, when the radiation is absorbed, depending upon the frequency of the radiation absorbed, the organic molecular nucleus nature is identified and that is what is the use of NMR technique. Let's get into the details. <coughs> See, look at this. As I told you, certain nucleus will spin. Not all the nucleus, certain nucleus spin. What kind of nucleus? When the nucleus uh, see, in order to spin nucleus, when you see inside the nucleus, we have protons are there as well as neutrons also there. Now, both protons and neutrons, both of them spin. If proton number and neutron numbers are, are equal, the spin will get cancelled. Imagine one proton is there, one neutron is there, both the spins will get cancelled. So, in order for the nucleus to have spin, it needs to have odd number of protons or odd number of atomic mass. So, this is what is the requirement. Now, understand what does these things mean. Odd number of proton means one proton is excess and that is what gives its spin. 
odd atomic mass means there are there is a proton number neutron number are not equal then only you will get odd atomic mass then it will have spin now after spin now look at this see it has got a proton which has got a positive it has got a proton which has got a positive charge now the positively charged anything which has got a charge if it is spinning it creates magnetic field so this is what happens when it spins it acts like a bar magnetic you know bar magnetic which will show a dipole moment it will exhibit two poles north and south and it will, it will have this magnetic field similar to this when a charged nucleus spins it behaves like a bar magnetic it will also have magnetic field and the magnetic field is quantified by magnetic moment this is what is the magnetic property of nuclei so it will have a magnetic moment getting a little bit more details so the magnetic moment let us see of hydrogen proton see hydrogen atom the nucleus has got only one proton it doesn't has got any neutron that is why it is called the nucleus is called as proton it has got only proton is there now the nucleus has got only one proton because it is odd number it will have a spin the spin quantum number is 1 by 2 and it will exhibit nmr spectra whereas when you look at carbon 12 carbon 12 has got six protons six neutrons all spins cancel this is what i have explained when spins gets cancelled if no spin is there no magnetic moment no nmr whereas 13 carbon an isotope of carbon 12 13 means it has got one extra neutron is there so the extra neutron will not cancel the spin and it has got a spin and that is also 1 by 2 so this one also shows nmr so in order to exhibit nmr it should have spin the spin quantum number has to be there if the spin cancels out no nmr can be seen moving further now look at this how a spinning proton creates a magnetic field see if this proton is spinning in this axis it will be creating this magnetic field so when no external magnetic field is applied all the protons will be spinning in different direction one proton is spinning in this direction another one in this direction the direction is not determined it just spins like that when no magnetic field is applied it spins in random direction but when you apply an external magnetic field see in nmr the m is because of applying of this external magnetic field so when in this direction when external magnetic field is applied look at this what is happening the nuclear spin slowly aligns with this external field initially it will be like this something something like this but because of this external field slowly it will be moving to this external field direction so this is what it moves now this is look at this diagram so this is a spinning nucleus and it has got axis of rotation and it has got nuclear magnetic dipole now when it is moving it moves in a particular orbit and it is called as precessional orbit let me explain it again see see imagine in initially the the spinning direction is like this when you apply external magnetic field slowly it moves to this external it will be aligned to this external magnetic field and this is called as precession and the orbit is precessional orbit so this is what happens when external field is applied the direction the axis will be slowly aligned with external magnetic field so this is without any field so without any field no field is there randomly oriented when you apply external magnetic field in this direction look at this what happens there could be two possibilities either all the nucleus can be aligned in this direction or they could take against the direction now this is given by see quantum physics gives uh, according to quantum physics there is a formula 2i plus 1 a nucleus will have this many number of orientations i is spin quantum number for proton it is 1 by 2 so 2 1 by 2 plus 1 2 2 get cancels so 2 so proton will have two orientations what are the orientation one aligned with the external field two against the applied field see this is in the external field direction this one is in opposite field direction so look at the same thing when external magnetic field is applied the nucleus will be aligned with applied magnetic field and it has got lower energy and more stable because it is more stable most of the nucleus will be in this state the other one nucleus aligned against the applied magnetic field it is higher energy level so few nucleus will be there in this orientation so this is what happens when external magnetic field is applied now now comes the real picture see this is the external magnetic field direction so the nucleus will be aligning itself in this external magnetic field this orientation is known as plus 1 by 2 now when it is revolving the frequency imagine it is 60 million hertz 
It means when you apply external magnetic field of this strength, like 14,100 gauss, it will be processing with 60 million head <coughs> frequency. Now, when you supply 60 million head frequency containing radiation, see, look at them, both of the frequencies are equal, and this state is known as resonance state. When the frequency match is there, this energy is absor absorbed by the nucleus, and look at this, the orientation has changed. Absorption occurs and orientation has changed. This is what is the technique. But understand this. Everything will be depending upon this external magnetic field applied. If you increase the external magnetic field, it needs more, ex, ex, more amount of this radiation energy. Why? When you increase this external magnetic field, this frequency increases. It will not be 60 million hertz. It will be more than that. So in order to get resonance, the external radiation should have more energy. More frequency containing electromagnetic radiation should be given. So, it all depends upon external magnetic field. Now, so keeping in simple words, see the orientations are known as alpha and beta. Alpha is low energy one aligned with the external field. Beta is against the field. So, this is with field, this is against the field. The energy difference is H nu. And this difference is proportional to applied field. If the applied field is more, energy difference will be more. So, when that particular radiation is given, flip or nucleus transition occurs. Moving further, see, increasing magnetic field, increasing the energy differences. So usually, uh, in, in, in general practice, uh, the practice is known as, it is known as field sweep. That means, the radio frequency will be kept constant at 60 million heads or something like that, and then the applied field will be changed. So field will be changing, and whenever the frequency match occurs, absorption occurs. This is called as field sweep. If the frequency is kept constant, it is called as, see, frequency is kept constant and the field is swept, hence it is known as field sweep. If the field is kept const constant and the frequency is changed, it is called as frequency sweep. But most commonly used one is field sweep. Moving to the next one. Now, this is not the entire story. If this is true, all the protons, if they are getting whatever is applied field is there, if B0 is applied and B0 is taken by the proton nucleus, every proton will get signal at a particular point. No changes will be there. But it is not the, it is not true. This is nucleus, you apply external magnetic field, whatever the applied field is there, that is what is felt by this nucleus when it is isolated proton. But protons are surrounded with electron density. All these electrons are surrounding this proton. Remember, electrons are also moving, electrons have got charge, so they will also develop magnetic fields. So this field, this induced magnetic field interface when you apply external field. So what happens, whatever you apply, it will not reach the nucleus because in between electrons are there, they are giving magnetic field and that magnetic field may increase the field strength or decrease the field strength. If it is decreasing the external field strength, it is known as shielding. If it is increasing the external field strength, it is known as de-shielding. So, shielding, de-shielding is depend upon surrounding electrons. So, not all the protons are in similar electronic environment and these differences can be elucidated by using nuclear magnetic resonance technique. You can look at them. The induced field decreases the strength of magnetic field felt by nucleus. What is this induced field? That is created by this revolving surrounding electrons. So depending upon the electronic environment, it, the changes will occur and that results in shielding and de-shielding and this is what gives different protons will absorb at different frequencies. The same thing. Shielding nucleus. The nucleus feels a smaller resultant field. You apply B0, but that will not reach because it is being shielded by electrons. So what happens as the electron density around the nucleus increases, the nucleus feels a smaller resultant magnetic field. So a lower frequency is needed to achieve resonance. Why? When the applied field is reduced, the frequency of rotation re reduces and a low radio frequency is required because the matching frequency is what getting absorbed. That is called resonance. Whereas de-shielded one, the nucleus feels a larger resultant field. What happens? Electron density around the nucleus decreases. The nucleus feels a larger resultant magnetic field. So higher frequency is needed to achieve resonance. Why more field means it is revolving with high frequency. So you need to give high frequency radio radiation. 
So we'll see in the next lecture, uh, it, it, it causes something called as upfield and downfield uh, shifts. So this is the basic principles of, principle of NMR. Now NMR signals, last but not the least, see the number of signals show how many different kinds of protons are present. Let us see this example, acetic acid. It has got two kinds of protons. All these protons belongs to similar environment, whereas these protons belong to similar environment. So you have two different uh, protons, environments are there. So you will get two signals, signal 1, signal 2. So what is this? Number of signals will tell you how many different kinds of protons are there. Second one, the location of the signals will show how shielding or deshielded proton is. Look at this. See, the signal has occurred here, whereas this one, the signal has occurred here. So this is the electronic environment. The, this, the shift is known as chemical shift. The difference is because of electronic environment. With this, you, you will estimate what is the electronic environment is. The next one, the intensity of the signal shows the number of protons of that type. Look at this. See, this intensity is very high. Why? Because it corresponds to three protons. This one has got lower intensity. Why? It, has, it corresponds to only one proton. The other one, there is something called a splitting shows the number of protons on adjacent atoms. There is a formula called as n plus 1. That means the signal is not so simple. Usually for this signal, you will get the, the signal will be split like this. Four splittings will be there. How many protons are correspond to this peak? It is three. So n plus 1 means three plus 1 means four split will be there. Whereas for this one, this is only one, so this will be split into two. n plus one, one plus one is two. So this split will indicate the adjacent number of pro proton environment. So all these things we'll see it later in the next video, but for this video, understand the principle. Thank you for watching this video.